everyone, welcome to Gate 4 Referee Info Centre on this amazing sunny day in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, today we're going to be going through the Advanced Skill Card. And this is a skill card that I developed on my own with skills that I've taught throughout the videos in the past, which are skills which will probably get you to a really elite level if you can master all of them. I'm going to remind everyone here and now that these skills are incredibly high risk. You don't need to do all of them during a game in order to win the game but one of them in a given situation might lead to you winning the game in turn. I recommend that everyone practices these skills and I know that a lot of frustration has come in the past when I've taught people some of these skills because they're not as easy as the core skills and the skills card that I had in my last video which is the one recommended by Gate 4 Australia and the one that I believe every single Gate 4 player should do regularly. Doing that once a month will get you to an extremely high level in Gate 4. Think of these skills as accoutrements to that skill card. I'll have the skill card linked below that I can get you access to a Google Docs or something of that form of a PDF perhaps, so you can look at the skills card in depth. But I'm gonna go through each one of the skills here. There are nowhere near the 10 skills in amount or number that are in the original skills card because these skills are fewer in number. Before we get started though, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you can get more interesting Gate 4 videos in English, as well as being able, as a subscriber, to comment down below and then be able to uh, recommend videos for future videos that you'd like. In fact, we just did one recently on grips and stalking the ball and stance, uh, which were recommended by one of our overseas uh, Gate 4 subscribers. Without further ado, we're going to go on to skill number one. And this is probably one of the easier ones, but one that takes an extreme amount of practice to do consistently. And the key with this skill is confidence. And I think I'll take it aside for a moment because confidence is incredibly important when you're doing any of the skills on this skills card. They're not particularly hard if you practice them. As long as you practice the skills, you'll be able to do them. The first skill is a form of push out, which I've explained, or a bombard push out, which I've explained in my uh, push out video. So with this one, we need to place one ball anywhere from, you know, 15 to 20 centimeters from a line. And you can see I'm near gate number two because it's relevant near gate number two usually. And another ball, which is this ball here, approximately one meter away from that ball. The aim of this, we're going to assume we've already made a touch with the stroker's ball being ball number nine. We need to spark this ball, which is our own team's ball, onto the opposition ball so that the opposition ball rolls off the field and this ball stays on the field. So we'll give it a try now. So as you can see, I pushed out the 10 ball and my three ball has stayed in the field. This takes a lot of practice and the key one with this is confidence because a lot of people are scared they're gonna push out their own ball. Keep practicing it. And all of these skills have to be repeated 10 times, unlike in the previous skills card, which is only five times. So you repeat the skill 10 times and there is a percentage rate in order to get right for each skill. I'll link that in the document below but this skills percentage rate is 70%. So you have to get seven out of the 10 shots that you've made in total to finish with the other ball going out and your ball staying in. Moving on to the next skill. The next skill on the skills card is one that I've discussed previously in one of my other videos. And that one involves jumping or using forward inertia and spin to get the stroker's ball, which is behind or on the back side of a gate, to the front side of a gate so that you can run through. So how do we set up this one? We set up about a meter away from the gate with the front ball. So this ball here is about a meter, just over a meter from uh, away from gate number two on the wrong side. You then place another ball about 20 centimeters away from that ball in line with the gate and in line with the other ball. You then must use the forward inertia drill, which is playing to the side or through the legs, to either cause the nine to jump onto the three and get into a gateable position, 
or to cause the nine to hit the three and then using forward spin to get in front of the gate for a gateable position. So we'll give it a try. So as you can see, my nine ball has made it to in front of the gate. You just have to spark the other ball away, doesn't matter where, and you have to be able to pass through the gate. That scores you one point. You need to do that 10 times, and the pass rate for this skill, as it's considered a core skill, is 100%. You need to get each of those 10 shots in front of the gate to pass on and move to the next skill. Moving on to the next skill. The next skill is perhaps the most difficult on the skills card and the one I believe people will most likely struggle with the most. This one is practicing jump touches in practical situations. The way we set up this drill is placing one ball on the line here at the back of gate two. You can see gate two is over there and I'm on the back side of gate two. We place one ball on the line and then we place another ball approximately 30 centimeters away from this ball. You then have to, using this back ball, which is ball number nine in this case, to jump touch off ball number three and gain a position which is gateable or on the front side of gate two. In order to score the point, you also have to pass the back ball that you've jump touched, so ball number nine, through the gate in order to score it. The key with this one is obviously practicing jump touches, but the skills pass percentage rate for this is only 60%. 60% is incredibly hard to achieve as this shot is incredibly high risk and it's not easy to jump touch this far distances. Let's give it a try. So as you can see, I successfully passed through gate two after performing the jump touch. Remembering you only need 60% of these to continue on, as this is a skill that's incredibly reliant on the ground, as well as your ability to do the jump touch. Moving on to the next skill. The next shot is a jump spark onto the goal pole. Place one ball approximately 30 to 40 centimeters away from the goal pole, or like 50 here actually, and then place another ball around 40 to 50 centimeters away from that. You then need to spark a ball onto the goal pole, jumping over the four ball, hitting the goal pole. Just like that. The pass rate for this skill is 100%. So once you get that after 10 shots, you can move on to the last skill on the card. Rightio, the last skill on the skills card. To set up this one, we place a red ball about a meter and a half to two meters away from a white ball, which is 20 centimeters away from another white ball, which is 10 to 15 centimeters away from a red ball. We then need to strike the four ball and then spark the four ball out of bounds whilst promoting this white ball towards that seven ball of ours over there so that we can touch it more easily. Make a successful touch on that ball. Spark that ball out of bounds anywhere on the field. And then successfully touch our own team's ball without going out of the field. The aim of this drill is so that we can get closer to our own ball whilst getting the other team's balls out and still being able to make a successful spark after this one. Once you've finished all of these skills, the appropriate skills percentages as I've mentioned, and as they're linked in the document below on the video, you'll be able to see what it takes to be an elite gateball player. Thank you for watching the videos again, and let's play ball.